there's all sorts of strange activity that happens around this jail. I just got really cold and I got goosebumps and it's weird because I was just saying that I was hot in the other room. Just hearing those footsteps echo through here. I thought I just heard voices down that way too. Uh, totally spooked him out. He refused to go back in the hut. What the f was that? Right, I'm really confused and I thought I was in Division 2. I must be in Division 3. So... Oh. And he saw a figure with a big beard. Have you committed a sin? Oh. And that is where the figure was sitting. Is he moving that chain? Keepers, thank you so much for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Tonight, Jared and I are investigating the very haunted Fremantle prison. If you haven't done so already, go and check out our part one video. I'll have links below to that one. It was a very creepy but interesting time. But get ready because we're really gonna focus in on the main cell block here, which is reputedly very, very haunted. The Fremantle Prison opened in 1855 and remained in operation until 1991. It was a harsh institute to spend time in, where punishments such as floggings and solitary confinement were heavily used. It was also a place of death, where many perished from illness, suicide and even execution, with the hanging room taking 44 lives. Already tonight we have investigated numerous areas of the prison, including the gallows and death row, which you can watch in the first video of this series linked below. Now we will focus more heavily on the main cell block designed to hold up to 1,000 prisoners at any given time. This is a place where many have reported paranormal experiences. These include strange smells, beams and balls of unexplainable light, sighting apparitions and shadow figures and even poltergeist activity. Already tonight in this cell block we have documented strange events just during our short walk through. We received the most chilling response possible within the old chapel. The prison church and this was kind of to inspire. Jump. Uh, 1900, a prisoner had jumped from the highest landing of First Division down to ground and died. We heard unexplained noises around us that even included voices. <laughs> and we even captured another response that seemed to foretell a discovery we were about to make. Film. We have making a film. Did you see that light go off? Hmm, blue light? It's a sensor light. Is a movie playing? Does that go off by sensor or? But now, we will find out what happens when we split up and investigate the cell block of the haunted Fremantle prison alone. From the get-go, we documented something strange. Here, you can see me setting up to film an investigation segment in the old church, while Jared was on the upper level setting up Ghost 2 Besseless, which you can actually hear beep in the footage. Listen closely and you'll hear a man's voice saying, no, this is not my own or Jared's. It even appears to have a thick accent. first place we want to investigate tonight is actually this place here, the Church of England, the church here at the Fremantle Prison. I feel this place is quite interesting, not only for Martha's face that a lot of people claim to see in the window that's just up here behind me, but there's just a vibe to this place. It feels very different to the prison. I know it's attached to the prison, but the main cell block, it just it's a church, it has a totally different vibe and feeling. So I wanna start our investigation here tonight and then we'll move into the cell block and maybe we'll be able to see a contrast or you know, receive different responses. It just has a different feeling. So Ooh. maybe you agree it has a different feeling in here. That wasn't me that time. No, so we have three cat balls down the aisle here, a REM pod, another night vision camera watching us. And up on the second level up here, we also have a ghost tube SLS that is monitoring that area for figures. We did have a um, strange response up there earlier. Now, before I hit record on the Vox, I, 
There's a, something weird that happened to Jar and I earlier. We were outside and there is a ghost story to go with this area. So we were hanging out just below one of the, um, the, the gun towers where the guards would sit to sort of patrol the prison area. And there is quite a juicy prevalent ghost story about that place. All around the prison are gun towers. They started from two in the 19th century to seven in the 20th century. And the guard would be up there for eight hours. Eight hours during the rain of winter, eight hours during the sun of summer. And there's no books, no radios, no TVs up because they've got to keep their eyes peeled at all times. Now, a common story is told by a former guard that we all have met, or the guides have met, a man called Sean Sheriff. And he talks up, he was one of the gun towers. It's the 1970s, it's four o'clock in the morning, he's got the radio on. He was listening to some music and then suddenly there was static on the radio and the radio went dead. And he felt an unease, he felt a sickness in his stomach. And he felt that something was strange behind him. Now he was in the covered part of the gun tower and there's an uncovered part. So he grabbed the gun, they have a .22 rifle. He ran to the end and he looked back into the hut and he saw a figure with a big beard. And then he shouted out in the courtyard saying, help, there's an intruder in the gun tower. Number four, please render assistance. He looked back into the hut and that figure in the beard had gone. And that totally spooked him out. He refused to go back in the hut. And when he went down, he was actually gonna transfer down to Albany prison the next week but he said, I want no more shifts up at gun tower number four. Now he had a friend that worked in the Beatty Library, which is the major library here in West Australia, he described the person. And this person went through uh, photog uh, photographs of uh, old prisoners who were former convicts. And uh, he presented some of these photographs and he found the photograph and uh, this uh, prison guard says, that's the person, that's the person I saw up in the gun tower. He was a former convict called William Chopin who was brought over for forgery. And uh, he trains as a chemist, but he was in prison for performing illegal operations, that is abortions. And he died in Fremantle Hospital in 1900. Anyway, we were hanging around that area and we we're getting some night vision shots and just some nighttime photos. And Jared and I both heard a really loud noise come from behind us from that guard tower. And I don't know what it could have been. It was like a loud bang. This one keeps going, that's interesting. It was like a loud bang, and I believe I may have captured it on my camera's audio. I think there's two each up in the front. What the heck was that? Okay, so I just started recording on Ghost Tube Box. Now, my name is Amy and I'm here tonight with Jared and we're, we're hoping to talk to anybody inside the church. So if you can come forward towards these lights in my hands, maybe tell us your name or say hello, that would be amazing. I don't know if you're already touching these light up balls in front of me. If you can continue to do that or go towards the red light, that would be amazing. And it did. So because this one keeps going off, I thought, you know, let's just roll the app now. Was this a, was this a place that you enjoyed coming? Can you say a prayer for us? Have you committed a sin? <laughs> Who's here mess messing with this ball here in front of me? <laughs> How long have you been here? How long can you tell us? Can you go to that upper floor up there? Walk towards the light up there? Do you have a message for us?
Do you believe? Do you believe in God? Guys, I don't know if this is a normal occurrence in here, but I'm trying to find the chapel, the upper level, to get the SS camera, and I'm getting lost and confused. Yeah, and I know that this is just one long building and the chapel's in the middle, so you'd think it'd be easy, but not all of these divisions have a staircase, and I keep, this is like my third time going up and down a staircase trying to find it. And this also happened to me when I was trying to find it to put the SLS camera in the mezzanine. So, yeah, I'm getting really confused and disoriented. I'm hoping it's this door. Oh! I thought it was that door. Maybe there's two doors in here. Oh, this is it. Anyway, I found it, but yeah, that was weird. I was trying to find Amy now. Got the SLS camera in my hand. I'm on the top floor and I'm getting a weird smell. That must go off every now and then. A bell. Alright, so we are splitting up now, yeah? Yep. I'm gonna hang out down this end where the full body apparition has been seen up near the top. You, I am shocked. You wanna go where the murderers were? Yeah, I'm feeling adventurous tonight. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's, I love that. All right, and we've also got a ghost tube SLS set up to monitor a separate space, um, along with REM pod, cat balls, all that good stuff. You name it. So. We might run a ghost tube session or two, right? Yeah, let's do it. And I've got these, or do you want these? Um, I want these. Okay, you can have them. <laughs> I know you want them though, don't you? Yeah, that's cool. You have them, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Here's the SLS camera doing its thing. So you should see me on it in a sec. Got the REM pod. Couple of cat balls. Notice how me walking past it wasn't enough to set it off. So that flashlight you can see there's just the infrared grid from the SLS camera. So let's do this. Alright guys, now Jared is gone, so I'm in uh, division one. Um I'm gonna head up to the higher level, so I'm gonna go up the stairs behind me. And that is, you know, there's been full body apparition seen up on this uh, very top sort of level. I can't get quite to the top, but I'm going to go as high as I can. Um, but there's all sorts of strange activity that happens around this jail. I'm also hoping the REM pod SLS picks something up. So, yeah. And who knows what Jared could find down that other end there. So... I did just hear something up here, so when we get to the top, that's um, ghost tube time. So Division 2 is worse crimes than Division 1, but still quite petty. Oh, it's very dark in here. So now I'm in Division 3. This one was for violent crimes, I believe. I've had to turn it around because it's so dark in here. I need to be able to see through the viewfinder. I just thought I heard a noise up here. Maybe on that second floor. Might head up there. I've got a magnetometer spike then, but as we showed in part one, that can be triggered by the rail, so I'm gonna Ignore that for now. Now we are in Division 4. Uh, 
Um, don't know if you guys heard that, but as I'm walking up these stairs, I hear these stairs creak. You know, it could be rickety old building, but um, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it did sound like there was someone on the stairs. There's somebody around me now, can you make a noise? Is there anyone here in Division 4 that wishes to communicate with me? If so, you better come follow me around, touch me, touch my equipment, touch the thing I'm holding in my hand. So guys, in part one, we then were standing. I think the floor above or the, the second floor above. We got the word on ghost under. We didn't know what it referred to, but I didn't realize that this cell door is open two floors down. So let's go in there and have a look. That's our upper level. Someone has been seen up here. We also had some very weird noises up here earlier in the night. And this is the other side. And that's the drop down. Okay, so ghost tube is rolling, my magnetometer just went crazy, but as we learned in part one, um, the steel, well, I don't know if it's steel, the metal fences, guardrails around here can trigger the magnetometer on ghost tube. So, I'm not going to say that's paranormal. Now, if there is somebody here, somebody around me, can you come close to the lights in my hand? I want you to give me a sign that shows me that you're here. Okay, there's a noise, thank you. It's a very small cell. Oh, there's extra rooms in here. Oh, this is the TV room. In part one we came up here and this TV was on by itself. Which I think it is on some timer, we were told. And it was in like a slow motion sort of effect. But I am told that's normal, at least during the day anyway. Why it was on at night time, I don't know, and it doesn't seem to be on now. I don't think I'm supposed to be in here though, so we're going to go back. Because that's probably where all the AV equipment is. I'll leave that alone. But it is weird though, because um, when we got the word under, that's when we went down and discovered that that was all still running. So. the cells. Oh. Can you make another noise for me please? Can you show yourself to us? To me? Yep. Yep. Funny that the noises all seem to be happening up here. And that is where the figure was seen.
I've got keys here for you. Philip. Philip. Thank you, Philip. I've got keys here for you. So we'll let you leave. If you want to escape, you want to leave the jail. I'm going to leave them down here next to these <coughs> strange lights on the floor here. If you can move them or make a noise, I'll leave them here for you. They, they'll be yours. I wasn't aware of this in the moment, but Philip could be relevant to one of the men who was executed at the Fremantle prison. On October 25th, 1926, Philip Trafin was hanged at the jail after he and another man had murdered and mutilated two detectives who had caught them at a secret treatment plant for stolen gold. While Philip could be relevant to any number of prisoners attached to the Fremantle prison, it is especially eerie to know that the name is linked to someone executed on the premises. Do you believe this response could be paranormal? It's actually got a real musky smell in here. And I'm told that this place had a really bad smell back in the day because they they obviously used buckets to excrete. Um, would have smunk, stunk really bad. That's not what I'm smelling right now though. I'm smelling like a musky, really musky smell. The best way I can describe it is the smell of cockroaches. That's what I'm smelling right now. But this is actually one of the biggest cells, but they would have four people sleeping in here. Can you come up to this device here on the bed? Not sure if I touched this or not. This chain, I don't remember touching it, but it is slightly moving. Is that you moving that? Can you do it again? Are you moving that chain? Why so long? Where? Okay, that's weird. I was just thinking. Frank. Framed? Are you innocent? I was just about to say, I thought I saw a weird reflection down there of the light. Philip, were you framed? Were you innocent? Oh, that was a big noise. If that was me, surely it would have stopped by now. I'm not gonna say it's paranormal, but it is weird that that's moving. There's no wind in here. It's actually, I was actually just about to say, it's actually very hot in here. Surprisingly, when we go to haunted places or there's ghost stories, there's, you know, always like, it's always quite cold. Anyway, other than the heat and the moving chain, I'm not getting much, so I'm gonna pick up ghost and we'll move into the next room. I'm getting so confused. I thought I came up these stairs. I thought I came up these stairs a different way. And I thought I was actually in going into that room there. Graveyard. Graveyard is a bit odd. There was executions performed here. People were hanged for crimes here at the Fremantle prison. But unlike a lot of other jails I've been to, the people executed are not buried in the jail. A lot of the times people were buried in the jail and it's almost like a life sentence. Even in death, you have to remain within the prison walls. Um, you know, we've seen that at such places as um, the Adelaide jail, 
we sent it at Jape Ward. Um, it, people could not be buried here because this is actually a lime limestone quarry, so the conditions are not appropriate to bury people here. So there is no graveyard here. So we don't. I'm getting so disoriented. No, that's right. The room that I went in was the room that led to the AV room. That's the one that I thought was opened and I didn't realise it. I swear that was this one. I'm getting so confused. I've just lost like the last five minutes. Just, it's like it never happened. All right, now I know where I'm. That's the thing that was outside the church. That's the door that was closed. So that means in this room should be the other chapel. Which I don't think me and Amy have been in yet. There's some confession stalls. Wow. I want to know more about Philip. What can you tell me about Philip? Can you tell me why you're still here? I want you to move something, make a noise. And tap on something. Can you go towards those lights I've left on the floor over there? Give me another noise, another word. I want to know why you're at the Fremantle prison. This is where they would confess their sins. Oh. Do you have any sins you wish to confess? <laughs> Alright guys, I'm in one of the confession stalls in the Catholic church that I found. And I just want to know if anyone wants to confess their sins. Oh. I just went really cold in and got goosebumps and it's weird because I was just saying that I was hot in the other room. This is the only area of the jail I've heard these little um, movement tap sort of noises down this end up here. So that's a little bit curious that this is, you know, it just happens in this one spot. Knock. Can you, can you knock for me? Make a noise. Just like this. I wish to confess my sins. Do you have any sins to confess? I need to go. Where do you need to go? Stay with me here. Confess your sins. And we can go. I tell you what. This place is very creepy in the dark at night. And alone in here. And there's just a little bit of light here and there, you know, 
coming through the roof or an exolite here and there. So earlier today, we were told that a lot of people have sighted people here in big sort of grey jackets. I believe that was the, what the guards wore. Um, my jacket that I bought for me <laughs> is on the ground floor down here. So just down there. I'm pointing right at my jacket right now. What does jacket mean? I've got warm again now, like, I was really hot. Then I came in here and got goosebumps and was cold and now I'm warm again. Norm Sorry, I'll tell you normal temperature now. Normal temperature, comfortable temperature. Are you making me feel this way? been in here yet. This is the library. And there was a um, noise over there. Someone in here? Is anyone here up there? I swear I was hearing footsteps out there. It could just be Amy's echo in the far distance, but she's right down the other end of the building, so. Hello? That you scared me then. Let's go up one more level. There's our REM pod. The SOS is like directly below me. Tap. Tap. Yes, you've been tapping down there all night. This was obviously not something that I noticed in the moment, but just as I started to speak about our ghost tube SLS camera beneath me, one of the lights helping to illuminate that area turned off by itself and remained off for the rest of the investigation. You can see this very moment clearly in the replay. I'm getting that strong musky smell again. What the? Something's going off the charts here. Is it this thing? No. Did 
Did you just make this happen? Did you come do that again? I wasn't near anything then. That's so weird. down to the ground floor I feel like ghost tube just said sure um, when I said scariest thing here is the stairs and was like sure <laughs> like there's scarier things here than the stairs what's the scariest thing about this prison if you were a guard here or you stayed here you would know right Can you come touch this thing in my hand? Might be able to generate some words. Let me know that you're here. I feel like someone was with me in that um, sinner's booth, but then they said, I need to go, and then it just went silent. That's weird. Well, I hope you can follow me around. I'm sorry. What do you want me to apologize for? Is it because you were framed? Do you want an apology for that? Is Philip still around? I'm heading back to Amy, so the next one should be Division of One. I think. Wait, is that the chapel? Thought I just heard voices down that way too. Right, I'm really confused and I thought I was in Division 2, I must be in Division 3. Are you behind me or are you in the chapel? I just got goosebumps. Division 2, this is so weird. Are you in here? In the chapel? Oh, something said I'm close, so I feel like it's maybe following me. That is so weird, I thought I was in a completely different division to the one I'm in. This is definitely Division 2 because I can see the REM pod down there. Okay, I can hear Jared's voice, so I'm noting that. I wonder if he's coming over to me. Just hearing those footsteps echo through here. He's going pretty quick, so maybe he's a bit spooked. What are you up to up there? I'm on the floor. <laughs> um, behind you. Ugh. You're in Division 1, right? Yeah. How am I on the top floor? Doesn't the top floor have a no entry to the public sign? I don't know. I'm so confused. Look behind you, Jared. Why? Ghost Tube just said behind you to me. Um really getting disoriented. I don't think I'm supposed to be on this floor then, right? Um, I don't know. How did you even get up there? I don't know. You probably can't come down that way then. Yeah, I'm on the other side of the gate where we're told we're not supposed to go. We'll walk back and then, I don't know. Oh, I'm so confused. Are you okay up there though? 
I'm just disoriented. I keep forgetting what division I'm in and where I'm going. I don't even know how I got up here. There he goes. <laughs> He's lost. All right, if you're behind me, come and move my hair. You can touch me, I don't care. I'm filming you come down. Oh. Yeah. What was that? Yes, what the fuck was that? Did you hear that too? Yep. What was that? I don't know, it's metallic. This is the kitchen. I don't think we've been in here yet. I haven't been in here. This is a lot of metal in here. I tell you what, it could have sounded something like that. Because if I hit this, listen to the, like the reverb sort of echoey. To me, it sounded more like a spring, like a metal spring going. Doing. Well, I guess you were a bit closer to it than I was. Wow, this place is massive. Yeah, how did we not explore this part of the building? Oh my god. Also noting there is a plane going overhead, so... Weird. Anyway, I heard that. I hope the camera got it and I hope yours did. Yeah. So. 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 Ooh-wee. What a night. <laughs> yeah, how'd you go by yourself? I was telling you this before, but I just felt really disoriented again for like the third time. And it's weird because this is just one really long building. Um, and somehow I keep getting that feeling where I thought I was in a different part of the building and then I realise that I'm not, you know what I mean? Mm. Like I thought I was in Division 3 but I was in Division 4. I thought I was in Division 2 but then I walked past the church which is in Division 3. So yeah, that happened a few times. And I'm getting lost and confused. This is like my third time going up and down a staircase trying to find it. I thought I came up these stairs a different way. I'm getting so confused. And I thought I was actually in going into that room there. So we don't, I'm getting so disoriented. Right, I'm really confused and I thought I was in Division 2. I must be in Division 3. How am I on the top floor? Doesn't the top floor have a no entry to the public sign? I am going to tell you guys what is particularly weird about that as well. Is in our relationship, Jared is the map guy. I'm the map guy. I'm he the one go with directions. He knows where he's going. I never know where I'm going, honestly. Like, I'm surprised. I haven't been lost once tonight. Mm. And honestly, that is weirder than you getting lost. I don't know how it's- <laughs> Or equally as weird. It's, I don't know if it's even possible to get lost. I would say just more disoriented because it's only one long building. Like, you know, mm. you don't get lost per se, but you can lose track of which room you're in, so. I reckon, <laughs> I don't know, you're also like confused or something. Not only lost, but you're like, oh, I've got your phone. And I'm like, no, you, no, you don't. Yeah. I've got you, <laughs> I've got my phone. Anyway. I don't know, just weird stuff like that. Uh, I had on my ghost tube the name Philip come through and then framed. I've got keys here for you. Philip. Okay, that's weird. I was just thinking. Framed. framed. Are you innocent? Obviously seems fitting and relevant to well, the location. Well, the word frames definitely, but whether Philip's a person that was here, I don't know. You know what, in the history of this place, for as long, as old as it is, as long as it operated, I'm sure there was a Philip first or last name here at one mm -hmm. stage. Doesn't mean that that was like, you know, 
the yeah. relevance that we seek, but it is interesting. I didn't get anything specific like that, but I had like, I'm close and I need to go. When I was in the sinners thing, what do you call that? Sinners booth? The confession. The confession, confession. store. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that was weird. And then when I was lost and walked past, unexpectedly walked past the chapel, I got, I'm close, so. Um, I had behind you down there and that is always a little bit scary. <laughs> uh, but we have so much footage to review, still cameras, SLS, uh, there's a whole lot. One other thing I want to mention is we are staying in the women's prison tonight. So Jar and I, we stayed there last night as well actually. Um, the women's prison is sort of attached to the Fremantle prison, but it's not part of the museum as this place kind of operates, where you can go through a, tight, a guided tour. That's um, poetic. <laughs> Today it is actually run as a youth hostel, so it's a pretty cool funky place to go and stay. Now we are not actually officially filming there. I think tonight when we go back to our room, I'll probably film a patron uh, YouTube member only, uh, maybe a box, maybe a ghost tube, something in the room, I don't know. I haven't had anything paranormal over there, but I have heard that it is allegedly haunted. Um, people say that Martha haunts over there and we were talking to someone at the roundhouse yesterday and they said after midnight, it's common that people hear women screaming. So I didn't hear anything like that. All I had was um, this morning, I think you were in the shower, you were getting ready and I was sitting on the bed and I could smell, it really smelled like cigarette smoke, very strong. And when you came out of the bathroom, I was like, can you also smell that? And you I mean, could, it, right? it could just be in a backpack of smoking. It could be. <laughs> smoking the reefer at the back or something. No, it would smell like cigarettes. <laughs> cigarettes, though, okay. Like, yeah, so I don't know. Um, so I thought I would just note that in case anyone ever comes visits Fremantle or like check it out, but definitely come and check out um, Fremantle Prison. Really, really cool place. And you literally are sleeping in what were former cells. I mean, obviously mm, there's bedding mm. in, there, in there now, but yeah, you're sleeping in cells. So it is kind of cool, um, yeah, if you just want that extra experience of staying in the, in the prison. For sure. Uh, I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. That really helps us out. If you want to do any more reading on this haunted prison or any of the other haunted places we've visited, from all over the world, head to my website, amyscrypt.com. Uh, we post bonus content on my Patreon and my YouTube members. They're linked below. And you can also follow us on social media at amyscrypt on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. So forget to download GhostTube, Vox, Box, and leave a comment. Below. Let us know what you think about it. Feedback, it's still quite new. So um, yeah, we, we're keen to hear any feedback you have. Yes, for sure. But thank you so much for watching Crypt Keepers. Until next time. Bye.